Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS2D. It's on weather and climate. Weather is what we see outside, like these thunderstorms right here, but climate is different, and so students tend to confuse those. Weather is what it looks like right now, so it's what it looks like today, and climate is what it looks like over a long period of time. And so they're both measuring the same thing, things like temperature, things like precipitation, wind, but it's really time scale. Weather is what it looks like right now. Climate is going to be over time. So what causes weather? What causes climate? Well, a number of different factors. It could be the amount of sunlight, oceans, atmosphere, ice, landforms, life forms. All these things interacting together are going to give us our weather today or our climate over time. So when you look at our planet, what you see are oceans and landforms. And those oceans and landforms are going to receive energy, receiving energy in the form of sunlight. And what they do with that energy is going to determine the weather. They're going to take in that energy. They're going to release some of it. They're going to absorb some of it. They're going to redistribute that on our planet. And that's going to create the weather that we have. And so some major uh, redistributions on our planet would be the currents. And so current is going to be flow within the water of the ocean itself. It's caused by temperature and changes in salinity. But if we're looking on the atmosphere itself, what's going to move our weather around are going to be the winds. And that's going to be caused by unequal heating of the earth. And also the spinning of the earth is going to create winds that tend to travel in the same direction. So in Montana, we tend to get our weather from the west. And that's because of the spin of the earth. Another big thing Thing that affects our climate is going to be the greenhouse effect. The way that works, um, and it gets its name from a greenhouse. And so if you've ever been in a greenhouse, especially on a hot day, it's really hot there. Even if it's cold outside, it's warm on the inside. How does it do that? Well, it's receiving sunlight, so it's receiving energy from the sun. But what the greenhouse is doing is as that energy is converted into thermal energy or heat, it's going to keep it close to our planet. And so we're not losing that as light, but that heat is actually reflected back down to the earth and it traps this heat near our planet. Now eventually we're going to lose that heat, but it's going to stay there for a longer period of time. So we have what are called greenhouse gases, and those greenhouse gases in our atmosphere are going to slow that loss of heat. The big four are going to be methane, that's natural gas, carbon dioxide, water vapor, so that's water that's in a um, gaseous form, and then nitrogen oxide. And so all of these are going to act to hold that heat near our planet. And so changes in climate or changes in our weather over a long period of time are really going to be due to two things. Changes in that atmosphere and therefore changes in our greenhouse effect. And then the Earth's reflectivity. In other words, how much of that energy from the sun is just reflected back into space and how much of it is going to be held here. And so if we have something really, really white, something really, really light, like a glacier, it's going to reflect a lot of that light. But if we have something really, really dark, like a uh, parking lot, for example, it's going, to have, it's going to hold more of that heat. And so what we can get is climatic changes. And those climatic changes can occur over a very short time scale over a long time scale. So what's an example of a short time scale? A big volcanic eruption can throw so much sediment into the atmosphere that it is going to reflect more of that light. Not as much of the light is going to get to our planet, and so we could get a cooling of our planet by having so much of that sediment into the atmosphere. A meteor impact could do the same thing, but we can also have slow changes. And so we can get small disturbances in the amount of radiation coming to our planet. And those over time can cause small fluctuations in our temperature. And ice ages are caused by that. As we had the arrival of life, a lot of those cyanobacteria started doing photosynthesis. It produced more oxygen and put that into the atmosphere and actually change the makeup of our atmosphere. And so a lot of these occur based on feedback loops. Feedback loops are going to be loops that either, either keep it stable or push it more away from stability. And so a quick example of that is as we heat our planet, we're actually melting a lot of the permafrost. And as we do that, that releases methane into the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas, which is going to cause it to melt faster releasing more methane into the atmosphere. And so humans can have an impact on this as well. And so we're creating more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And we're doing that through the burning of fossil fuels. And this is just going to be looking at carbon dioxide levels in over the last 40 years. And what that's going to do is increase our temperature. 
or as we melt more of that Arctic ice cap, what's going to happen to the reflectivity of our Earth? It's going to change, and that's going to cause an increase in temperature as well. So how do you talk about all these in school? Well, you want to start by delineating between weather and climate. And so what is weather? Weather is what it looks like today. So it's going to be the temperature. It's going to be how much sunshine we have. Do we have rain? Do we have wind? All of that is going to be weather. And it's something that a lot of elementary teachers do well, what it looks like today. As we move into the upper elementary grades, we want to make sure that we're, we're clear in the difference between weather and climate. Weather is what it looks like today. Climate is going to be what it looks like over time. They're the same measurements, but they're over a long period of time. So here we're looking at maximum temperature and minimum temperatures. And you could figure out which of these is during the summer and which of these is during the winter. As we move into middle school, we want to talk about the factors that affect this. And so it's going to be all of these factors are affecting the weather and the climate. One of the big ones is going to be the sun and the angle of the sun hitting our planet. If it's near the equator, we're going to get direct light and we're going to have higher temperatures. And if we're far away from that, we're going to have lower temperatures. But again, as the Earth turns and as it turns on its axis, we're going to get changes. But again, all of these factors are affecting the weather and the climate. And students should understand that it's incredibly complex. And so since so many factors are affecting our weather, it's hard to predict what's going to happen. And when you look at a weather forecast, what you're really looking at is a probability. They're looking at a lot of different models of what it might look like today. And 60% of those models are predicting that it might rain. But it might not because it's really, really complex. Other things in middle school we should talk about is how oceans especially are taking in energy and redistributing that energy on our planet and the importance of greenhouse effect and how greenhouse gases slow the loss of heat from our planet. As we move into high school, we should talk about climate and how climates can change over time as we change the atmosphere or the reflectivity of our planet. And we can have small and large timescale differences. An example of this could be the ice ages, but we also have to talk about how humans can impact the climate as well. As we increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, due to the burning of fossil fuels, we're simply going to increase the temperature on our planet. And you can see this. We've got 1,000 years of data, but this is going to be the temperature that we have now. And it's just going to get warmer and warmer. But it's not that bad because we can make impacts on that. We can decrease the amount of these green greenhouse gases and we can turn it around. And so that's weather. That's climate. They're incredibly important, really important in our future. And I hope that was helpful.